Hallelujah. I'm out of breath from worshiping the Lord this morning. I need to get in shape. Hey, go ahead and have a seat. And let me just uh, uh, say to you, as you have a seat at all of our campuses, happy birthday today, 16 years old. Give yourselves a hand today, 16 uh, years old as a church. And, And for the last probably three or four years, we've been in puberty. And it's been a little awkward. And, uh, you know, you start using deodorant and you start paying attention. You're trying to decide, I'm going to play with logos or we're going to ask her out. And uh, I just want you to know from this point forward, we're asking her out. And uh, we're moving on. Uh, I know you've heard rumors. I've heard a lot of rumors as to what the announcements are uh, today. Uh, Probably the most prevalent rumor that we heard was that Meredith was pregnant. Uh, which, which hurt her feelings a little bit. She started running, actually, because she thought, do people think that I'm fat? And uh, the, the, the news, the announcement is actually I'm pregnant, not Meredith. And, and uh, you thought I was getting fat. I, 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 I'm, I'm pregnant, and, and I'm pregnant with vision, and, and I'm pregnant with where the Lord is taking us today. And uh, I just want to say to you, for those of you who haven't been around, in 2003, we launched a church here called the Church at Battle Creek. The reason we named it the church at Battle Creek was because of the proximity to this golf course and these neighborhoods here. Uh, This little fledgling church start, we we didn't know if anybody would come or or knew what what it was or where it was. And we thought if we tag some geographical uh, tag on it, maybe people could find it. And and within about five years, the truth is we stole the name Battle Creek. And and now it's the golf course. Oh, you mean next to the church. And now it's the neighborhoods. Oh, you mean next to the church. And and all of a sudden, we, we had great equity over the several years in the name of Battle Creek. Now, about seven years ago when we launched the church at Midtown, we had a creative meeting and and basically there were a fork in the road. And and one fork was, do we go with uh, Battle Creek you know, Midtown or Battle Creek, whatever, or do we go with the church at? And uh, I got outvoted, okay? I just want to tell you that I was for Battle Creek, and the reason was not because I thought it made sense, because Battle Creek was a geographic area, but, but because of the equity the Lord had given us in that name. And that name was associated with people coming to know Jesus. That name was associated with a next generation uh, heart for the next generation. That name was associated with orphan care and fostering and adoption. That was associated with going to the Middle East. And so uh, the the truth is, is that I I got outvoted seven years ago and we went with the church app, which is probably, not probably, is the most biblical name for a church. I have vehemently defended it for the last seven years and and tried to carry it across the country. And though it is probably or is the most biblically based name, it has been unbelievably clearly the most confusing church name on the planet. How how many of you ever invited somebody to the church at and it became confusing? Yeah, yeah. The rest of you should have invited somebody. (laughs) And and, and every time staff people uh, would say, my email address is at the church.at, people would say, what? And it was a three-minute conversation. As a pastor, when people would find out I was a pastor, they'd say, where do you pastor? In Tulsa, what, what church? The church at churches, what? And, and the moment I would say, well, we have several campuses. Uh, we have one in Broken Arrow called the church at Battle Creek. Oh, Battle Creek, I, I know that. Probably five times I heard near the South Tulsa campus and six times near the Owasso campus, I would meet somebody in the city and, and I would say, oh, where do you live? And they would tell me, I'd say, well, right there at your house, we have a campus. And they said, really, where? And I would tell them and they would say, we did not know that was associated with Battle Creek. We thought that was just another ORU kid starting a church. And, 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 and so uh, I'm not against ORU kids starting churches. I'm just saying this is different than some of those, right? And, and, and so I, I was like, uh, well, we got to fix that. We, we have to fix that. And so starting today, by the way, there's a threefold announcement, okay? And I'm just giving you one today. I'll preach the other two points, okay? But, but, but the first one is, is this, the most uh, visible thing is our name. From this point forward, we are Battle Creek Church. At all of our campuses, we're about a big church. And so we're taking the equity that that name has, and we're, and we're giving it to all the other campuses. So it'll be Battle Creek Midtown. This will be called Battle Creek Broken Arrow. And, and, and so Battle Creek South Tulsa, Battle Creek, wherever they happen to be. Now, let me give you one caveat, okay, because I want you to understand this. For the very same reason, we didn't go looking for a name, okay? We just, we, we didn't. We, we could have found some really cool names if we'd have been looking for a name. But we were asking the question, what are we known as? 
in, in this city. And where do we already have 16 years of equity in this city? And for the grace of God, we have an amazing reputation that, that for over 16 years. And so we thank the Lord for that. We pray he continues to protect that name, right? But for the very same reason we're going with Battle Creek, Egypt and Jordan are staying with TC. For the very same reasons. Because the water under the bridge there is unbelievable. The name recognition is unbelievable. You couldn't pay millions of dollars to have the name recognition that TC has in the Middle East. And and so we're not going to change that. No way would we change that. And so here's the great news. All of this TC swag that y'all have, you bring it back. Lightly used. Okay, I'm not talking about you wash the car with it. But I'm talking about the, the lightly used stuff. And we will repurpose it in Egypt and in Jordan. In fact, I'm dreaming uh, about walking through this, the refugee camps in Amman, Jordan, and seeing tens of thousands of TC shirts a- a- as we clothe people who need clothing, but they're wearing a banner for a church that's being birthed in that place. And, and, and so all the signage, all the shirts, all the hats, all the swag, bring it back, and we will repurpose it in a missional way. It's not going in the garbage, okay? We're going to use it uh, to propagate the gospel in, in the Middle East. And so uh, Battle Creek Church, let me just say to you, I love you. And at every campus, to celebrate our birthday and to celebrate this uh, new name, we have some people that are going to come out and do something a little special with every campus, okay? Can we give it up one more time for our founding pastor, Alex Amaya? Such great news. My name is Gospel, and this is Kate, and we are so excited that we have a brand new name. I'm mostly excited that it won't take me 20 minutes to explain where I go to church in Target. Amen? So, Kate, what are you mostly excited for with this new name change? Let me tell you, when it comes to... There we go. When it comes to a new name, it means new merch. So I'm always game for some free stuff. All right, let me tell you about it. First and foremost, here today, every person in this room is going home with a sweet new Battle Creek Church t-shirt that I'm holding. There it is, everybody in here. So if you have a preschooler or a kid in our kids' ministry, their adorable tiny size t-shirts are in the north hallway. So when you go to pick up your kids this afternoon, grab one of their t-shirts in the west and the south hallways. There are all the non-tiny adult size t-shirts for you to grab for you and your whole family. Everybody gets to go home with one today. Then coming to you are one of these incredible decal stickers with our brand new Battle Creek yes, Church very nice. bumper sticker for your very nice. car. Let me tell you, maybe you're hesitant to put a churchy sticker on your car. Some maybe, of y'all drive crazy. I see yeah, some of y'all on the road. Maybe y'all be driving push crazy. the speed limit a little yes, more. Yes, a little bit. Just a little bit. But listen, Gospel, we're the perfect place for imperfect people. That's exactly right. So you just declare that to the world. You know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, no shame. So Slap it right on, on the car. car. It's going to be great. Now, when you, this is the thing. This is another added bonus. Is when you get pulled over for speeding, all those people can drive by and be like, oh, maybe I can go to that church because they, mm. they, they accept imperfect they people. They understand like, me. With people with a speeding ticket record, you know. That's so right. This is going to be great for you. It's going to be great for you and your family. Also, drive safe. Always wear your seatbelt. There, amen. Yes, that is so true. Also, in your swag bag is one of these incredible Invite Your Friend to Battle Creek Church cards. This is convenient, perfectly sized to fit in your wallet. Or purse. So you can pull, or purse, or back your cell phone, whatever yes. you want to do. So you can pull this out, invite your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, your family to come with you to Battle Creek Church. So super easy to do that. We've got that for you. Who doesn't love a piece of jewelry? You know what yes. I'm saying? Can I hear an amen from the bling, ladies? Bling, bling. Old but fashioned. Worry, old fashioned bling. Yes. Also fashionable for the gentlemen in the room. Yes. A Battle and the Creek lady. Church yes. bracelet. So yes. here we go to that. Very excited personally. Okay. For all of your writing needs, we've got you a pin. A pin. Battle Creek Church pin right yes. here. Gospel, now listen up about this it. pin. Listen, this pin is not for you. This pin is for the waitress that you write the generous tip and you leave it in the book. So that way the waitress comes That's up like, true. oh my God, they generous at Battle Creek Church. Mm. I'm going to go and bring my friends because mm. they generous. So yes. write in the thing. Don't Now now listen, don't take it if you're not going to leave a good tip. Like we are givers. We give because God gave. So that write a, a good word. tip, leave the pin, and then watch the friends come in. Watch the Lord bring them in. So this pin is for those folks out there. That pin is about to revolutionize the city of Tulsa. Yes, Let me it tell will. You. Yes, All right, what else at, is in this, starting in this heads. swag bag? Oh, one of my favorites, a pin for your jean jacket, your yes. backpack, your jeans, your T-shirts, your hair bows. All of your pin needs, and not just one, but we're going to give you two pins. There's an abundance of pins in this place. your jean jackets, your backpacks, your hair bows, all of your pin needs. We've got them here, right here at TC Battle Creek. Yes, so listen up, you guys, because I, 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 I don't want to be like, I didn't understand. It was confusing. Listen up. So everybody here 
is leaving with a t-shirt, mm. right? But what the, a yes, yeah, all for all of y'all. Amen. But the swag bag is one per family. I don't want y'all walking Just up and be one. like, I got extended family. They should have been mm -hmm. here, all right? One That's per true. family. This so is, This is not an opportunity to stack up in your Christmas gifts. Exactly. Not trying to yeah. load it up. No, I yeah. got another Battle Creek pin for Christmas. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, so you guys have seen Oprah's favorite things. You've seen these grown suburban women lose their minds when Oprah says, I'm about to do Oprah's favorite thing. Ah! Just, so we are going to have Gospel and Kate's favorite things. And let me tell Ooh. you, there yes. it is. See, that's the, that's the, let me, let's do that's it again. Let's do it again. About. Let's do it again. We are going to have Gospel and Kate's favorite things. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Battle Creek okay. Church killing it. They, they doing it. So the only thing better than merch is exclusive Ooh, merch. Yes. So we've got some so items true. up here that so are very exclusive. You have to be in the service in this moment to have them. There's not very many of them. Very limited, very rare, very exclusive. Mm. And that's where the gospel and Kate's favorite thing. So Kate, let us know what we're walking home with. First and Some foremost, people. yes, for the most hype in the crowd, for all of your Frisbee needs, we've got yes. you a Battle Creek Church Frisbee. Yes. But let me tell you, it's not just any Frisbee. It is a color-changing Frisbee. Changes colors, yes. I know, exclusive. Yes. I love this attitude. This attitude's all right. His attitude's gonna, killing. Let me tell you the rest of the things, and then you can get real hype. Yes. The second incredible thing that you get is one of these beautiful, as gospel Exclusive. told me, coral, coral. colored Battle coral. Creek Church t-shirts. Yes. I know. Yes. This you is how you dress your kid. With this jeans. Is, yes. Yes. Jeans. This is how you dress your kids if you don't want them to get lost. You dress mm. them up like, oh, there he is in the orange. Go get it. That's a word. That's What's the that's last a one? Word. All right. Last but certainly not least, for your kids games for your trips to the beach for the times you're stuck in your car and it's cold outside we have you a battle creek church blanket with, with a, a handle, handle. Hey. let's go who even comes up with this stuff this i don't incredible. even know i don't I even know it. so this is how it's going to go down we're not giving this stuff away to just anybody mm -hmm. we need the hypest no. people in the crowd i got Wait. runners coming through they're going to hand Cut it out in. so if you really want this merch Cut we got to see it where's this frisbee at This side of the room. All right, they're over here. I got some hype folks right here. Just straight up. I got some hype folks right here. There we go. Watch your head. Watch your head. We got a hype over here in the back. One here down in the front. All right, I'm coming in with the shirt. This is very intense. All right, we got some hype folks right here. Hype folks right here in this section over here. All right. All right, I think that's 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 all the stuff. We okay. We got some hype people. This is We've got exciting. some hype people. How I'm many of you guys are excited that we are now Battle Creek Church? Let's go. Awesome. Well, there are some exciting things happening here at Battle Creek Church. And Kate's just about to tell you about one of them right now. Oh, yes. One of the things that's happening is going down tonight. Right here in this room is our volunteer training. So for those of you who have been serving with us here at Battle Creek Church in our groups ministry, our hello team, our student ministry, our kids ministry, or any area of our church, tonight is the place that you want to be right here in this room so that you can be encouraged from a word from our pastor, be trained for this upcoming year, and get dinner, which I'm never mad about. You know, some free food. Shout yes. out to that. In Jesus and name. maybe, right, and maybe you're like, hey, this is incredible what God is doing here at Battle Creek Church. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of volunteering with the incredible things that God is doing. Well, listen, you are welcome to come tonight. Check out the areas of ministry that you can come serve in and see what God may have in store for you for this next year. So 4 p.m. is our groups training, and at 5 p.m., all of our church is gathering together, all of our volunteers gathering together for dinner right here in this room. Yes, it's going to be awesome. And so now I just want to ask you guys a question. Raise your hand if you know somebody who's not in a community group. I see some people like, mm, it's actually me, Jesus, but I'm going to be mm. honest in this moment. I just okay. trust you. So the thing about it is next month we are going to make it incredibly easy for you to start a group. I know what you think, gospel, I can't really start a group. I don't really have snacks. I don't really know what's going on. We are going to make it super easy. We're going to give you all the curriculum, all the training, all the tools so that you can start a group. Because the reality of it all is God has given you a sphere of influence. So there are folks that are in your life that God has placed there because he wants to use you to influence them. And one of the best ways to do that, one of the most awesome ways to do that is through a group. And so we're going to make it extremely easy for you to start a group next month. We're going to give you more information next week, but it's going to be awesome. It's on your radar. Trust me, this is God speaking to you. Start a group if you haven't already. So that's, that's one of the things we wanted to let you guys know about. 
The ushers are coming forward. They're going to serve us as we transition into a time of worship through our giving. And as they do, church, I just want to simply say thank you so much. I was backstage, and I'm listening to Pastor Alex cast vision and talk about how we have places in Egypt and Jordan. And what it made me realize is we have a global influence. And the Lord has called us to some great work, not just in Tulsa, not just in America, but around the world. And it's your giving that enables us to step up to the call that God has placed on us and go forward with excellence. So as we give today, I want you to know your giving, your giving makes a real-world impact But that real world impact has eternal significance. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering. Lord, that you would receive this offering from our heart to yours. That it would be a sweet aroma, Father. And that you would continually remind us, Lord, that we're stewards of everything we have. And I thank you, Lord, that as we realize that, that that, that we're, we're, we're living in a life where you can get anything to and give anything through us. Father God, I bless your people. I pray that your face would shine upon your people. Father God, I pray that you would overtake and overwhelm them with your goodness and your glory. Father God, I pray that you would bless their life so much that everybody in their sphere of influence would realize that there's something different about them and it would create a hunger for you in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As you are so excited to hear all the incredible things that are happening here at Battle Creek Church, I know you are just as excited as we are to have Pastor Alex here this morning sharing a word from the Lord with us. So as we get ready to launch our new series called This Is Your Place, would you turn your attention to the screens? This is my place to worship. This is where I found acceptance. This is my place to learn about Jesus. This is my place to discover purpose. This is my place for friendship. This is where I found support. This is my place to find freedom. Well, guys, it's so good to be back with you today. And before we begin, okay, before I jump in this brand new series, I I, want to call your attention to something that on September the 8th, everybody say September the 8th. That's only one month from today, okay? So you only got four weeks to get ready for this. On on that day is our baptism day. And so if you're here and you need to follow the Lord on believer's baptism, for whatever reason you haven't taken that step and you need to take that step, take that, this card out of the seat pocket in front of you and and Mark, send me information on baptism. And if you want to be baptized on that day, on the 8th of September, just write 9-8 out beside it and we'll make an appointment for you to be baptized on that day. If you've got questions, just check this. Somebody will call you and answer all of your questions about it, but it's not just a baptism day. It is also what we call a gospel day. And and the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. We share the gospel 52 weeks a year, but three times a year, the whole service is built explicitly for people who don't have a relationship with Jesus to come into a relationship with Jesus. And that Sunday is one of those Sundays. And so church, what I'm asking all of you to do is even right now, one month in advance to start praying right now. And to ask God, who is it that I'm supposed to be investing in? Who is it that I'm supposed to be inviting? Who is it that I would even take further than just inviting that I would bring to church with me on that day? And and church, what would happen if all of us began praying about who God's put on our heart, began investing in people's lives for the next four weeks, inviting them, and we did that to the degree that each of us was able to bring one person with us who who needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just think about the, the cumulative effect of that. If you and I all got on board with that, so I want you to begin praying and I want you to begin investing and I want you to uh, begin reaching out to people September the 8th. In fact, under this paint where I'm standing on this stage right now are literally the names of hundreds and hundreds of people that we wrote with marker and we prayed over, that we prayed years ago would come to know Jesus Christ. Under the carpet at most of our campuses are the names of hundreds and hundreds of people that we were praying for. In the foundations of most of our campuses or in the sidewalks, we wrote names of people that we were praying to come to know Christ and threw it in the rebar before the concrete was poured, before the sidewalk was poured. And what I'm saying to you is that this church is literally built on the idea that found people find people. 
And most of us are here because somebody who was found found us, and we are not about to let our foot off of that pedal as long as there are men and women and boys and girls who need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so the explicit opportunity, the next one is September the 8th, four weeks from today. So don't wake up September the 7th and think, who am I going to invest in? you got to start investing now to earn the right to bring those people with you. And between now and then, between now and, and September the 8th, uh, we, we're going to do a, a, a new series for three weeks that we're calling This Is Your Place. This is your place. And, and it's about this place, which is really your place. And we're going to talk about what it is that makes this church unique and how you play a role in making it unique. And this whole series is a series about who we are as a church. And whether you've been here a week or a day or a month or a year or 10 years, I want you to hear me say today, this is your place. And, and for some of you, you know that already. You already drank the Kool-Aid and, and, and the Battle Creek Kool-Aid, right? If we were handing out, you would have drank it. And, and and you would say, I'm in, I'm all about it. Others of you, you're like kind of sticking your feet, you know, checking the water out. You're still checking us out. But for all of you, I want me, you to hear me say today that this is your place. In fact, look at the guy or girl sitting beside you and say, this is my place. Now turn and look at the other side, the other neighbor on the other side and say, uh-uh, it's mine. <laughs> and when it comes to who we are and what we're all about, it's always been super tight and biblically sound stuff. In fact, those of you who've been around any length of time, you, you've probably seen this numerous times. We exist to glorify God by helping all people of all ages, all the time, advance in their journey with Christ. For 16 years, that has been our mission statement, and it has been great. It has helped us relaunch this church. It helped us grow. It helped us add campuses along the way. That, that mission statement has quite honestly, we have seen most of this city impacted by that mission statement. That mission statement has taken us overseas to places like Egypt and Jordan and other places across the Middle East. It has led to the adoption and the fostering of literally hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of children. But after 16 years, Years, here's what we've realized. We've come to this new realization that that, that whole statement, really what it is, is a 30,000 foot view of who we are as a church, which is fine. It's beyond fine. It's great, right? Because it tells us where we want to go and it tells us what it is that we value. But what it doesn't do is tell us how to get there. And what we need in our church is a 10 foot view that we can see in our vision every day, week in and week out. And we've done our homework on this whole thing. And, and one thing that I was challenged to do by a guy named Donald Miller, who is a, a story brand expert, is he said, hey, take your webpage, take your banner, take your, uh, your, your, your name, take your mission statement and go to Starbucks. Which by the way, is battlecreekchurch.com up today? Yes, yeah, up today, brand new website up today. BattleCreekChurch.com. I took it and I, I went to Starbucks and I asked a guy, hey, could I buy you a cup of coffee and have five minutes of your time? A and I began to let him read our mission statement. And then I looked at this total stranger who knew nothing about church and said, tell me what it is that we do. It was a little muddy. Not only was the name muddy, but the mission was, was a little bit muddy. And here's what I found in the last eight months. We have to be very intentional about how we tell people who we are and what it is that we do. Why? Because if you confuse, you lose. And so we have walked through this process for the last eight months, nearly since the beginning of the year. And, and, and so here, here's what we're doing. We're keeping this statement probably forever, right? That we're, we're keeping this statement, but it is now going to serve not as our mission statement. It will serve as our vision statement, okay? Which is bigger and broader. And, and it's our vision statement. And, and uh, so now, because this is the vision statement, we need a new mission statement that tells us what behind the why, right? Vision is why. Mission is what you do to accomplish that vision. And so we've done some research and here's what we found out. All people, man, woman, boys and girls, all have four things that they all need. In fact, they're wired by their maker to inherently want these four things. And so church, look at me, theologically, biblically, if we believe that God is the answer to all of those inherent needs and wants, then let's take those wants and match them up with him meeting those needs through his bride, the local church. And, and so here is our brand new mission statement. Get out your pens. Did we give you the pens already? 
We didn't give you the pens already. We should have thought through that, actually. A little foresight gospel would have, would have worked on that one. And, 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 and uh, by, by the way, gospel opened for Lecrae last weekend, which is incredible. Uh, and, and so, so get out your pen, your lipstick, your, your mascara, whatever. Get something to write with, okay? And, and here, here's the brand new mission statement for Battle Creek Church. Battle Creek is a group of local churches helping you know God, find real freedom, discover your purpose, and make a global difference, okay? And, and so when you come to this place, which is your place, you will find that we have set this up sequentially for these four things to play out in your life, for you to know God, for you to find freedom, for you to discover your purpose, and for you to make a real difference or a global difference. And we've set this thing up so that it works for any and all people. And it really is encapsulated in that one word in our vision statement, which has been our vision statement for 16 years, that word time. That, that word time, this is how we explain it to staff people all the time. This is how we spend all of our time do, doing these four things. It's at the heart of it. In fact, it's what we call the Great Commission. It's when Jesus, before he left this earth, he told us what to do. Jesus did not resurrect from the grave and say to his buddies, have a good summer. He said, no, this is what I want you to be about, and this is what I want you to do. And that word time stands for tell, involve, mature, and empower. We've been teaching this for 16 years. This is how we spend all of our time, telling people about Jesus, involving them in community groups, maturing them through a growth track or an advanced track, and then empowering them to make a difference in the world. And so watch as I take these two statements and lay them on top of one another. The vision statement at why and the mission statement what, and watch as these two things merge. Uh, together. You, you need to know God, so we're going to tell you about Jesus. You, you need to find freedom, so we're going to involve you in, in a community group. You need to discover your purpose, so we want to take you through an advance track. And the way we're going to do that primarily over the next several years of, our, of the life of our church is we, we are writing and videoing. I've been doing this for the last several weeks and going to finish it this week. A, a four-week advance track that is designed to help you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. And I want you to go through this four-week class. Your campus pastor next week will come and give you uh, news on how it'll be offered at every campus and which hour and how it's going to play out. It'll be different at every campus, but, but you'll get that information. And, and so you need to go through this advanced track, and, and it starts on September the 8th. You, you want to know how to make a difference, we, we want to empower you. How? By helping you find your place in the local church and your purpose in this world. And by the way, all of this goes all the way back to the very first church. Again, this, this is the Great Commission. This isn't something that we came up with in 2003 when we launched this church. This has not been around since 1983 or 1953. This has been around since 33. 33 A.D. This came out of the heart of Jesus Christ. And after Jesus came back from the grave, before he ascended to heaven, he told his disciples, you wait. You wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come and his power to fall on you. And when the Holy Spirit came and the power of the Holy Spirit fell, the New Testament church was birthed. And Luke, who wrote uh, both Luke and Acts, described that very first church in the book of Acts. And, and so if you got your Bible, he's very clear about what that church looked like. We've studied this many times before, but let me just show it to you in, in Acts chapter 2. They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So the first thing that they did is they worshiped together at, at the temple. Now, let me, let me just show you this. They went often to the temple because there were so many people that needed Jesus. Jesus was brand new. This gospel message was you know, uh, uh, the new thing, and they all needed it. But they went to this weekly worship service at the temple, which is exactly what we do at Battle Creek. We gather weekly at, at, for a worship service, and what are we doing in that service? Primarily, we're telling people about Jesus. Why? Because they inherently need to know God. Now, now the Bible says next that they met in homes. In 2019, we call that community groups. And we invite everyone at every campus to be involved in a community group. Why? Because we all need to find freedom. And that happens through biblical 
community. And, and the instruction to all the community group leaders over the next few weeks and next few months is to, hey, you got to steer that group to a place where people find real freedom. The, the Bible says, Luke does, that not only that, that they shared everything together and they did life together. And as they did life together, look, they discovered their purpose which is how all of us need to mature as believers. What did God put us here for? And, and you, you go through this advanced track or this journey and we will help you learn that. And, and finally, since we're all wired to make a global difference, we want to empower you to do that. Again, by you knowing your place in the church and your purpose in the world. And, and, and then just like the Lord was adding to them that day to their number daily is what the Bible says, the Lord is adding to the reach and adding to the influence of Battle Creek on a daily basis. So, so these four things, by the way, they, they play out like the sequential stations on the face of a clock, right? You, you, we, you need to know God, so we'll tell you about Jesus. You need to find freedom, so we'll involve you in a community group. You need to discover purpose, so we'll, we'll turn you through an advanced track. You, you need to make a difference, so we will help you get on the dream team so that you are participating in what the Lord has for you to participate in. And we've intentionally set it up, by the way, for, for you to know God by telling you about Jesus. And by the way, when you come to know God, then we want you to begin telling other people of Jesus. So you need to know these things. You need these things. But when you have been around for some time, no pun intended, we expect for you to begin to tell people, involve people, mature people, and empower people. Empower them to what? To tell people about Jesus. Involve others in community. Mature them through the advanced track. And empower them. Empower them to what? to tell people about Jesus, involve them in ministry. How can you make a big time difference by joining us in telling, involving, maturing, and empowering? And on and on and on it goes, like the hands of a clock that are going around twice a day, every day. And, and so uh, let, let, let's just go over this mission statement again. Let's all say it at every campus, all together. Throw it up on a lower thirds. Battle Creek is a group of local churches helping people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a global difference. And over the next four weeks, we want you to put yourself on this clock. Where are you in, in, in this journey? These four things that your maker wired you to need and to want. Wh wh where are you? And I want you to ask yourself these two questions. Where am I? And what's my next step? And wherever you are, it's okay to be there. It's just not okay to stay there. He loves you too much to leave you there. And, and so ask yourself those two questions. Where am I in this process? But, because here's what I know about many of you. You came. A few weeks ago, I was a, at a therapist's office, and, and the, the, the girl was uh, working on my shoulders. And, and, and I said, tell me your faith story. And she said, well, I, about a year ago when school started, I went to this church called Battle Creek, and, I, and the pastor gave people an invitation to receive Christ. She didn't know who I was. I was pregnant and fat, I guess. I don't know why. But, but, but I said, really? I said, how was he? She said, he was good. I said, yeah, that's what I like to hear. And, and, and I said, that's where I go to church. I didn't tell her I was the pastor. And, and, and by the end of the journey, I said, hey, did you connect? She said, no, I, I haven't connected. But I've gotten some emails, but I haven't connected. I really need to connect. I wish I knew somebody could help me do that. I said, we're going to send an email by the end of this little session, and, and you're going to connect. Because here's what I know about many of you. You've come to a place where you know God now but you've stalled in the process. And you haven't been involved in a community group. And, and, and quite honestly, you're forgiven, but you're not free. And you got hangups and addictions and, and, and issues and behaviors that you're not set free from. Even though you've been forgiven, you need to be set free. And, and, and so you need to get connected or you're in a community group and you feel like there's no traction. You, you're just spinning your wheels and, and because you don't know what your purpose is. Go to the advance track and we'll help you discover what, what your purpose is. And, and, and you've, you, you need to make a difference, but you're not yet making a difference. And, and so we want to help you with this process because this is what God wants for you. And it's the purpose of his local church, the bride, to help people do this these four things. So the, by the way, let, let's just rewind to here today. Okay. This is where I'm going to camp out for the next hour. Okay. Uh, 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 not an hour actually, but just a few minutes. I want to camp out on, on, on no God. Okay. And so what, what does it mean? Because we promise to help all people of all ages, all the time, know God. How? By telling them uh, uh, about Jesus Christ. And we primarily do that through the weekend services at the church. And by the way, we absolutely love it. 
And those of us on the inside, quite honestly, when we think about people on the outside, it seems weird to us that they wouldn't uh, love it. And and, and by the way, I think it's largely the church's fault that people out there don't really love church. Because by and large, uh, the capital C church over the last half a century has made it really, really, really difficult for people to connect. Made it really difficult for people to see the relevance. Made it really difficult for people to look past the things done without excellence. But made it really difficult to look past the robes and the language and the terminology. And we've made this thing that people who really love church love. But people who don't really love church don't love what we've made. Because what we've made when we made something difficult is a religious place. And Jesus hates religion. There's a good book written on that subject (laughs) that you should pick up. In fact, five years ago, we did that series, and it has been in the DNA of our church, and it's not only been revolutionary in people's lives, it's been revolutionary in the DNA of our church. And so on September 8th, when we start a brand new series, we're going to go through Jesus Hates Religion. And we want groups to start it. And if you know people, look, we're going to give you the video, the content, the curriculum. We want you to be in your normal community group. But I want you to start a group. If you know two people who are not in a group, you can start a group and meet at lunch. You say, I don't know how to do it. Play the video on your computer and and then read the book and ask questions. It's like a book club that you're with people for five weeks. That's all. Not till Jesus comes back. You say, I can't lead this till Jesus comes. But here's what we know from churches who have implemented this strategy and getting their people to, to put shoes on the gospel and go out and live it in the world. 50% of all those little groups we start that last five weeks will survive and will become groups. And people will say, I really want to know that God. I really do want to find that freedom. I really do want to know what my purpose is. And I want to learn to make a difference. And so be praying now about how you could start a five-week Jesus Hates Religion uh, group. But because I love this place, I want other to love this place. And so what we did 16 years ago is a bunch of us got together and said, what if? What if we built a place that people who don't love church love? And what if, what what would that look like? And we began to write it out on paper. And we said, what would that look like? What would that feel like? And and we've been trying to live that out ever since for the last 16 years. And, And the point is not to make this a place that we love. That's not the point. In fact, as a churchy person, when you walk in here and go, I'm not sure I love that, that's a good sign. It's a really good sign that you are in the right place that is doing what is on the heart of God. Why? Because part of the process is for you to die to yourself and and, and the mature give up to reach the immature. Listen, we, we, we love this. So we're not designing a place that you love. We're designing a place that they love, that they come in and they so love it that they'll go get their friends and family and bring them and invite them to this place. Why? So they can know God. And when a church is designed to be what it's designed to be, or it acts out what it's designed to be, it is great. And the church, by the way, it is for people who need to know God, who need to find freedom, who need to discover purpose, and need to learn to make a difference. But the problem is when the church isn't that, it becomes really, really difficult for people. Because they come in and they think, well, if the church is for church people, then who is Christianity for? And who is that guy Jesus for? Is he just for church people? Let's just look at it again. Battle Creek Church is a group of local churches. Say it with me. Helping people know God, find real freedom, discover their purpose, and make a global difference. Instead of making it difficult for people to get on board, we want to make it simple and easy for people to get on board. Some of you have have seen me use this illustration because I've done it a couple of times, but it's such a fantastic illustration to illustrate what it is that I'm trying to communicate uh, to you today. That if you're new to church and you're new to Christianity, you're down here at the bottom. And people that have been around a while, like some of us, all we have, by the way, is a little more experience than the people who are at the bottom of the ladder. But they're on the top of the ladder. Okay, so let's illustrate this uh, man bun. Come here for just a second. And and, and, uh, when you wear your hair that way, you have to display it for all to see. And and so jump up on the the top of that. And and, and here's what happens, okay, is that you're sort of way up there. We are sort of way up there. 
And others come into uh, the church, and this is how it plays out, even though we don't mean for this to play out this way. And here's the real dilemma. Most churches have removed the bottom rungs from the ladder altogether. And, and, And so people walk in and look at it and go, wow, look at you way up there. That's amazing for you. Look at you guys. You, you're so smart, and you're so good, and you're so disciplined. You, you know the Bible. You're so close to God. I am so proud of you and so thrilled for you. And you know what? I think it's great. I think it's amazing for you guys up there. And you know what? Sometimes I'm even envious of you. I wish my kids had what your kids had, and I wish my kids knew what your kids knew, and I would love to know about God like you know about God. I would love to know God loves me, and I I think this relationship with God could help me with my job. It could help me with my hangups and habits. It could help me with my marriage. It probably could help me with my children. I would love to meet people who share my values, but when I come into church, I don't even know how to get on the ladder with you. And this is the problem, by the way, that we're hoping to have fixed or are working to fix. You, you, can, you can come down. Just jump. You made it hard for people to get on, so jump. And, and, and so look, and if you get hurt, heal yourself back there. Look, here's the problem. That's the problem we're hoping to fix, right? And, and we are fixing. And here's what you need to know. If you're new to this whole church thing, that problem did not start in 1955. And it did not start in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It started a long time ago, just a few years after Jesus Christ left the earth. And it happened in the epicenter of Christianity called Jerusalem. And the story of it is found in the book of Acts, a a few chapters over. In fact, turn there, Acts chapter 15. And what you have in Acts 15, for those of you who've been around church a while, is really the minutes from the very first church business meeting. It's fascinating, actually. I don't know if you've ever been to a business meeting. When I was 15, I I went to a business meeting on a Wednesday night to the church that I was coming to know Christ at. And and a deacon, I don't know if you know what a deacon is if you're unchurched. It's like church mafia. And and, uh, (laughs) one of the deacons punched Fred Lowry, the pastor, in the face. I remember thinking, whatever this is, I'm in. I am so intrigued by this, but I love this. And if this is how we get to act with one another, I want in. And and by the way, that didn't just happen at First Baptist Bossier when I was a kid. That happened in Acts 15. Look at it. I'll show you. You read between the lines, you'll see it. And if you're not a Christian, by the way, Acts is a great book for you to start reading the Bible because it's the book of the start of the church. It tells the story of the start of this thing we call church, the New Testament church after Jesus, uh, you know, left. And, And here's the deal about the first church. They were all all Jewish. All the first Christians were Jewish Christians, which makes sense because Jesus and all the disciples were Jewish, right? And and so the first church was only Jews who had come to believe in the Messiah, uh, Jesus Christ. But pretty soon the circle gets wider and wider and wider and wider. And the message is traveling through the back of changed lives. And over the course of time, people are hearing about it, and they're putting their faith and their trust in Jesus, and they're becoming Christians. Well, word gets back to headquarters in Jerusalem that the head guys hear about it. And I know this surprises you if you've been to church and church business meetings. Not everyone was happy. They weren't all thrilled with it. Why? Because being a Jew turns out is not just, doesn't just mean you had the Word of God. It doesn't just mean that you had the right parents and that you're from a certain place. It also meant that you had a list of rules that you had to follow. And all these Gentiles, that's just the Bible word for people who have no Jewish blood. Gentiles, non-Jews. We're all Gentiles, right? Unless you have Jewish blood in you, and there's very few of us, right? We're we're Gentiles. And so these non-Jews, these Gentiles, are coming to faith in Christ without following all the rules. In other words, they jump to the head of the line, and some people are not happy about it. And they wanted all the Gentiles to follow all the Jewish rules and all the Jewish laws. Now, that's not the case today. We're not dealing with that today. We don't have problems with people coming in here going, do I have to become a Jew first, right? Do we, do we have to get, you know, uh, kosher? That, that doesn't ever happen around here, right? But, but, but there is the idea, whether we mean to or not, that can come out like this. We, we are this, whatever this is. And in order to be one of us, you have to be this first. 
Let, let me just illustrate it, okay? You, you walk in as a visitor. This is a silly illustration, but it'll help you. You walk in as a visitor, and you sit down between two people who've been around a while. And you look over, and the person on your right has an Apple Watch on. The person on your left, you look over there, they got an Apple Watch on. And, and the person in front of you raises his hand during worship, and he's got an Apple Watch on. And you might think, your first time here, do I need an Apple Watch to fit in? That's ridiculous, right? But you could see how that could play out. Of course, you don't need that, right? But, but what about, let me give you a more uh, real-life example, because I've heard this on a numerous occasions, actually. It's fascinating to me. How many of you are moms? Raise your hand. You're a mom. And, and, and so you, you come into the church for the very first time, and you meet other moms who are a part of our church. And you look around at all the other moms, and you're like, these moms all foster or adopt if I want to belong here, I've got to start adopting some kids. I heard that, by the way, several times, actually. I've heard people say, I'm not coming to that church. I'm not ready to adopt. <laughs> Do you have to adopt to belong here? Of course not. But the idea is there, and you could see how it could play out. So in the first century, all of the Christians who were Jews, uh, it was, it was easy to think that you had to be Jew to become Christian because all the Christians were Jewish, right? So it, it, that's the problem that they got stuck with. And this idea that was supposed to be so simple, that Jesus came for everybody, became a very difficult thing to live out at that point. And Jesus isn't risen and gone 30 minutes and the church starts to complicate this whole thing. What, what was supposed to be the message for everyone was being turned into this exclusive message that was for certain people. And the insiders were making it hard for the outsiders to know God. And if the whole point was for us to tell all people, these guys who were telling people were, were becoming pragmatic and saying, can we just make it easy uh, for, for us to tell people? So the early church had a meeting. They began to talk about this very thing, and they recorded it in Acts 15. That's where we're going to pick up and read it together. Acts 15 and verse uh, 1. Look at it. Some men from Judea arrived and began to teach the believers, unless you are circumcised, whoa, unless you are circumcised as required in the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. That sounds like an extreme rule, doesn't it? I mean, unless you're circumcised, right? You should have told me that up front. I feel like there's a little bait and switch going on here. I, I, I'll just take my chances without the church, right? And we've joked about this before. I know the membership class of their advanced track was pretty much all women because no men were going. Because, you know, in class one, we're going to pull, a, pull uh, you know, a trailer up and circumcise you. <laughs> You, you laugh at that, but that's how silly this thing really is. It, look, look at verse 2. They, th this brought Paul and Barnabas. These are brothers, believers in Christ, into a sharp dispute and debate. Now, here's one thing you need to know. Let me teach you for five minutes. That word Greek for dispute and debate is not like a high school debate team. They got together and were handed opposing views on, on, on something, and they went at it for a few minutes. This is not even like the local cable news where they're screaming over each other uh, uh, for their particular point. That's not what that word is. This was not a discussion that Paul wanted to have. The word for dispute is the very same word for insurrection or revolution. Paul was about to punch Barnabas in the face. That is what's playing out. He was going to go off on, on Barnabas. And, and basically, I envision him standing up. And, and, and I know he's not Hispanic, but I, I view this Hispanic voice of, hey, you say to these Gentiles, they need to be circumcised. I will cut you. <laughs> Security, right? And, and, and so as this is playing out, that's what's going on in this first meeting. Now watch what plays out. So, so Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. So these guys are appointed as the representatives to go to the headquarters in Jerusalem to see the guys that are in charge about this debate that they're having. They need help solving this thing. The apostles is who they're going to go see. They're the rock stars, right? Because they're the ones that knew Jesus. Jesus is dead and gone, right? He's resurrected and gone, dead and alive and gone, right? And these were the guys that knew Jesus. So they're like the rock stars in that first church. Now watch, verse 5. But then some of the believers who belong to the sect of the Pharisees, that's so really interesting, actually. Because the Pharisees are the religious people who crucified Jesus. Let, let, let me come back to that in a second. These guys stood up and insisted, the Gentile converts must be circumcised 
and required to follow the law of Moses. Now, now here's what's interesting. These guys, Pharisees, were the Jewish leaders who have now become Christian. They're now a part of this first Christian business meeting in the first Christian church. They killed Jesus and then became followers of Jesus, not because of what Jesus taught, but because of what Jesus did. He rose from the dead. And I think they got together and thought, I think we were wrong, guys. <laughs> we crucified him, and now he's back. We were wrong on this thing. And so the very ones who condemned him, by the way, you're here and you're skeptical of Jesus, that's a very good reason for you to come to know Christ. That, that the very people who killed him uh, received his forgiveness and received his grace just a few minutes later, they're following Jesus. And, and, and they became Christians within weeks of the crucifixion. And, and they were saying, it's great that these Gentiles, these non-Jews, are coming to believe in Jesus. And it's amazing that they want to join the club, but not so fast you got to become Jewish before you become a Christian. It's not easy. It's complicated. And they got to be willing to pay the price if they want to be on the team. they got to go through the hazing if they want to be in the fraternity. That's what's playing out. Now, now look at verse 7. At the meeting, after a long discussion, right? You, some of you have been to business meeting. Peter stood and addressed them. God knows the people's hearts. And he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. Now watch what he says, verse 9. He made no, that's God, God made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. And this is huge. There is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. There's no distinction between haves and have-nots. There's no distinctions between white and black and brown and yellow and red, that the so-called perfect and the truly imperfect, that there's not anymore the good and the bad. There's no longer the pure and the impure, the righteous and the unrighteous. There is no distinction. He purified their hearts, not by them keeping the law. Now, now watch what happens. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers, who grew up with all these rules, have been able to follow. Are, are you understanding how they're confessing with one another and getting vulnerable? He's saying God's done something new. God has done something simple. He made this message available to everyone. And you are trying to complicate it by putting a burden on them that none of them could ever bear. In other words, you've removed the rungs from the ladder. And he's saying, come on, guys, let's just be honest and tell the truth. None of us is very good at keeping all of the law, right? And they're all looking around going, that, this meeting, I, I guess that's true. I'm not very good at it. And Zeke, you suck at it, right? And, 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 and we, we, we can't do this thing. We're not even good at doing this thing right. Why would we want to put this yoke on the Gentiles that, that we haven't even carried well? Now, now look at verse 11. No, we believe it's through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved just as they are. Now, here's what's fascinating in this story. I wish I had time to read it all to you. James, the brother of Jesus, the real-life brother of Jesus, who had to have serious clout, steps up to the microphone, and he begins to address the audience, which, by the way, again, if you're here and you're skeptical of Jesus, this is another point that ought to cause you just to jump into the river of trusting Jesus Christ. How many of you have a brother? Raise your hand. How many of you have ever thought he was the Messiah? Leave your hand up. <laughs> the very brother of Jesus comes to trust in Jesus that he is the Messiah. Come on, guys. He, he is credible, and he has lived this thing out. And James steps up, the real-life brother of Jesus, and he steps up to the microphone and says, listen to what he says, listen to what he says. And by the way, There's a verse that encapsulates what I have always wanted this church to be about. It's this verse. Verse 19. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for those who are turning to 
God. We should not what? Make it difficult. For people who are turning to God, why would we make it difficult on them? God made it easy. It's grace is what it is. And why would we make it difficult? And when we make it difficult for people to turn to God, we have embraced religion. Did I mention we're doing a series next month called Jesus Hates Religion on the subject matter of grace. And we need to make the gospel, two things, write these two words down, available and accessible. That's what we need to do with the gospel. we got to make it available and accessible. And and we need to make it simple to get on board with what God is doing. And the first time I I read that verse as we were starting this church, I thought, God, that's exactly what I want to do. That's what I want Battle Creek to be all about. I want to go to a church like that. I want to love a church like that. I want that church to be my place. I want to call that place my place. And I want to be able to invite unsaved people and and my neighbors and my family who, who don't know Christ. I want to make it's so simple because who doesn't need it to be made simple to connect with their heavenly father who who doesn't need to be forgiven Who, who doesn't want bad habits broken who doesn't want a better marriage who doesn't want kids that that get it everyone has that in common people everyone Why would the church, the body of Jesus Christ, make it so complicated and so difficult? And the complexity started in the first century. And when we started this place, we said, hey, you know what we've got to do? We've got to put these things back on. Because we believe Jesus is for every one. And we believe the church is not just for church people. We think it's for every one. Why, why do we think the church is for everyone? Because everyone needs to be forgiven. Everyone needs to know God. Everyone needs to find freedom. Everyone needs to discover their purpose. And everybody was wired to want to make a difference. Everyone needs forgiveness. I I do. Anybody else need forgiveness? So so let me just summarize the who, what, where, when, why, how of of all that I just told you. Who who are we? We're, We're Battle Creek Church. What are we about? Helping people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. When do we do that? All the time. What do you mean time? Tell, involve, mature, and empower. That's how we spend our time. Where do we do that? In six locations across Tulsa, a couple in the Middle East, on the internet, and who knows where else in the days to come. How do we do that? Well, we help people know God primarily through our weekend services. We help people find real freedom primarily through community groups. We, we, we help people uh, ad, advance or discover their purpose through an advanced track. And, and we put people in their place in the church and their purpose in the world. Why? To glorify God by helping all people of all ages all the time advance in their journey with Jesus Christ. Is it clear? I, I pray today that it is crystal clear. Habakkuk said it this way, make it clear. Write it down so that they can run with it. I I pray today that the Holy Spirit has made this so crystal clear to you today. We've taken away a name that was confusing. We've taken away a mission that was confusing. And we've given you a name and a mission that is super simple and super clear for you to get on the dream team. And make a difference in your church and make a difference in the world that you live in. Would you pray with me all across all of our auditoriums? Today, as you you bow your heads, can can I just say to you again that we really want you to put yourself on that clock and in that journey. And that whole journey begins with you coming to know God. And if you're here today and say, Pastor, I don't think I do. I, I don't think I know God. I don't think I have a relationship with Jesus, but I would like to have a relationship with Jesus. I would like to know him. 
We're so glad that you're here. And, and today I would love to lead you in a prayer helping you trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to pray it one phrase at a time so that you can pray it after me. Nobody's going to pray alone. You're going to have support at every phrase in the prayer because men and women, boys and girls around you are going to be praying. But you want to know God. You want to trust Jesus. Would you just say, dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but today I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin. Jesus, come into my life to be my Lord, my Savior, my forgiver. In the best way that I know how, I turn my back on my sin and I trust you alone, Jesus, to save me. Thank you for saving me. And if you just prayed that prayer, before I say amen, before we finish the prayer, if you just prayed that prayer, we're so excited for you and we would love to know that. But, but I also want to lead the rest of us in a prayer. And now that you know God, I want to include you in, in this prayer. Could we just spend a minute praying for the people that we know, the people that we come in contact with, the people that we work with, the people our kids play ball with or, or, or cheer with, our neighbors, our employees, our employer, that those people in our sphere of influence that Jesus died for that need a relationship with Him. They need to know God. In fact, just in your own words, under your own breath, would you just pray where you are at your campus and ask God to lay names on your heart? People that He wants to use you to invest in, to pray for, to invite, to bring. lift their names up to your heavenly father would you ask God to give you the courage to make that call send that text drive over and have that conversation go to that lunch go to that coffee and that God would open the door for you to open this dialogue where you could bring them to a place where they could come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And church, would you, would you just pray with me? Would you just pray that God would wake us up from whatever it is that has caused us to be sluggish or slumber around something that is so urgent? and is such good news. God, move us again to be a faith family where the Holy Spirit is comfortable, to be a faith family where the believers partner with one another to bring people, investing and inviting to come to know Jesus Christ on a weekly basis, on, on a day-by-day -day basis, Father, that, that we wouldn't just watch them birth into this world, but we would help them grow through community groups and through advance track, and that we would help them mature, that they would be full-fledged followers of Christ themselves who are also using all the gifts and talents you've deposited in them. Would you favor us in that way again? Would you take us to that place again? In Jesus' name we pray, and together we all say amen and amen. Just